We're talking about electric skillets today. Well, hi there, food friends. It's Kevin. And it's Marianne behind the camera. And sister is working camera duty today. Thank you very much, Rhett Mayor, um. for, for doing that. And I thought today would be a good day to take a look at what I have often said is my favorite appliance, and that's electric skillets. So, we are in aisle three here at Cavalcade, which is chock full of different small appliances. And at this end is electric skillets of different varieties. And I just, I just want to look at, at these um, and share them with you uh, and talk about them because they are so really wonderfully versatile appliances. And often people call them, rather than electric skillets, electric fry pans. They're, that term is sort of, those two terms are interchangeable. And honestly, uh, much like the toaster episode, one company that really stood out, Marianne, for electric skillets for many years was Sunbeam and they made a lot and we'll take a look at the sunbeams maybe first which i have here and this is a standard sunbeam you can come in a little closer mayor so our friends can see electric skillet this is an aluminum skillet which as we know aluminum conducts heat beautifully uh they're not non-stick uh but you know what you get enough butter in here and nothing's going to stick, right, Mary? Right. <laughs> so, uh, in this particular unit, the heat control or your thermostat is separate. And, of course, you know, it starts at warm and it goes all the way up to 420 degrees. And most of these were, you know, they go in on the side and they lock in. You plug it in. There's a little light on here. It comes on when the skillet is heating and when this light goes off it tells you that the skillet has achieved the temperature and it maintains that temperature throughout which is nice and it'll cycle on and off and most of the skillets not all of them will have a little guide here it says bacon it's hard to see and this one's worn bacon 340, cake, 300, chili, chops, fish, fries, ham, liver, steak, uh, and that will kind of help guide you. Also, Sunbeam had this wonderful little, this little hook on the edge of the top. Did this, Mare. There you go. Okay, held the lid open for you, so you didn't have to worry about finding a place for this hot lid, sometimes filled with a lot of moisture or condensation. No, nope, you could just hook it right into the handle and there you were. Uh, most skillets also had a vent here at the top, so you could, if you were steaming things uh, and you wanted uh, it to escape and be uh, more dry if you wanted to keep the cooking more moist you'd close the vent so that's a sunbeam so here's a twin to it really same skillet in every way except it's fancier yes this one has a painted uh, lid which is really cool and so this was a definite upgrade but you can see other than the lid these are exactly the same the same skillet. Now, when Sunbeam first started making electric skillets, and I don't know that they were the first ones, they made an electric skillet that really looked like a skillet. Here's one. Here's a larger size. And see this? I mean, it had a handle. Just like if you, if you had a skillet that you put on the stove, right, it would have a handle. Uh, except most skillets were round and these are square and they figured out that the square was a little bit more versatile you know you could I could make four grilled cheese sandwiches right in this baby um, and this is the large one but unlike the one up 
here, which came a little later, this one, Mare, you can see has the thermostat and heat control built right into the handle. Again, it starts at warm and it goes up to 420 degrees. And it's got a little guide here for different things. Boy, everyone was eat making liver. That's Here's liver again, 360 degrees. Should I make you a liver dinner? As long as you add onions and bacon, bacon. with it. Okay. And um, potatoes. Um, so, and then here's, here's the same one in a smaller size. This is a little earlier model. You can see this one has a chrome dial as opposed to the plastic one and again aluminum and same thing this this lights up there's a light under here that comes up the plug goes right in there like so we've seen these appliance cords before where they're very popular with a lot of small appliances and you plug in like that so this is the sunbeam and you could have a metal lid or you could upgrade to this really nice what they call the look-through lid, so that you could actually see the cooking in progress. Yeah, make sure it didn't get burnt. Yes, the things didn't get burnt. Um, and you could see what was going on. So, these are your sunbeams. And then, over the years, sunbeam really, and still to this day, kept with sort of the square shape. Here's some later models, sunbeams. Again, basically the same fry pan, just updated handles. And then some companies thought, well, skillets are round, so let's make a round skillet. So here's a couple. Here's a General Electric. Again, this one, there's the, there's the instruction manual that came with it and the cord. And like that sunbeam, it has the uh, control here built into the handle and as well as a temperature chart on it. But it's round, just like a fry pan would be that you'd use on the stove. And then this had a little, look at this mirror, this has got a pop-up vent. So when the, the steam pressure gets uh, high inside the uh, pan, it pushes this little doohickey up and it releases the steam. So this is a GE. By the way, you could get it in a combination of turquoise and a copper tone top if you wanted. Although this one has a sliding vent as opposed to that pop-up vent. So that was General Electric sort of um, foray into the electric skillet market. They also made a square version here. Oh, this one's still taped up. <laughs> okay, haven't undone that one yet. And with all this inventory, folks, sometimes it takes me a while to get things. Here's one from the 70s, as you might imagine, Mayor, from the avocado green color, right? right. General Electric. Now, this one has got a non-stick uh, Teflon coating in it, which is, of course, wearing away. That was the problem with that early Teflon stuff. I actually don't use this because I don't trust that. But... Um, uh, to get into my food but I love the color of it and um, it's just a nice piece from the time period then of course we have Westinghouse now Westinghouse made electric skillets and here are two that are the bodies are similar but look at the mayor look at this cool handle so this actually had a kind of a uh, you know a grip that you could put you know you could lift this thing up um, although you really wouldn't want to move it too much when it was cooking it'd be hot for sure but down here is your temperature your frying guide I don't know if you can can get a shot of that and then here on the end is your you can see there's a little red light there the here is your thermostat and that's your uh, temperature guide so this one has a glass lid and then this one has a copper tone. Well, that needs to be clean. Um, this one has a copper tone. Um, this one's actually in pretty rough shape. Uh, copper tone and uh, black handle here. So that is the Westinghouse. And then later on, Westinghouse 
made this style of electric skillet, which is really beautiful. Look at those little hairpin um, legs. And then you had uh, sort of a, an open top. And then here's your heat control that went into it. So this is your Westinghouse. A little bit later um, for them, electric skillet. Then, Farberware. Farberware made electric skillets, and I would say these are probably some wonderful skillets. Now, what was different about Farberware is theirs were done in stainless steel. See how shiny it is, Mary? Yes. And they had a very good heat control unit called Perfect Heat, and this is... Um, a round Farberware electric skillets were round. Here's a little smaller version, same thing, again with a handle. And even though it had a handle, they didn't put the heat control in here. The heat control was a separate unit on the Farberware. And here's one that is an electric Farberware electric skillet. They call it a buffet server. So this was really almost you see it's kind of got that fancy pedestal mm -hmm. base this was intended to be used um, at the dinner table or on a buffet to keep food warm as well as cook so you could cook and serve in the Farberware buffet server here um, and they're excellent excellent fry pans oh what else do we want to show Oh, then of course, this is good old Presto. So, Presto still uh, makes electric skillets and other small appliances. This was the Presto Cook and Serve. This was an all aluminum, cast aluminum body here. But it had these really nice big handles, very easy to move. Uh, it here's your control master switch again you know goes from warm to 400 uh, with an indicator light and this was a very popular uh, skillet um, I actually have one here still in its original box how cool is that and here's the lid for it Never used. Never used. So someone got it as a gift and thought, eh, okay. Then we've got uh, some larger ones. So, of course, you know, it's like, well, how else can you improve on the um, electric skillet? You can make it bigger. So here's an old, again, it's got that old Teflon coating. You can see it's worn away. This one was used a lot. This is a Presto. Um, but a big, big electric skillet, this was their idea of a lid holder. So when you flipped it up, it would go like, like so, and it would keep that lid up. Here is a large one. Mary, you can see this is a Sears Kenmore. So this was a Sears brand. Not sure who made it uh, for them. It might have been Presto. It might have been another company. But this is their, here's the, the control on it. It says Sears Kenmore. So, back when, you know, we had all these stores, hard to imagine that Sears is gone, and Penny's is gone, and oh, here's one, speaking of gone department stores, here's from one from Montgomery Wards. Here's a Mon look at this, Mayor. Look at look at that control. This is a Montgomery Ward's Signature Deluxe. Isn't that a beautiful pan? And it's got it's an all aluminum, but the it's got a wonderful chrome top to it. It's got a really nice uh, shape. And that's from Monkey Ward's. And then we have some other odds and ends here. Here's one. A Dominion, again, it's got uh, that old Teflon coating on the inside. And this was called a Roaster N, N Fryer. 
look at Miss Mott over here. Okay, so you can definitely tell when this is from. This would have been from the 1970s and uh, probably the early 70s. But it's a real, I love, I got it because I really love the color. And also, I don't know if you can see the vent here. Kind of looks like a face to me. Yes, it does. It? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that was intentional or not. Um, so that's from Dominion. Uh, we've got some other uh, different brands here. Here's one from... Oh, it's hard to see. The name is on the control. It says Pennies. Another great American department store that I think is not going to be around much longer. J.C. Penney's. This was their house brand, and they're an electric skillet from there. And then West Bend, which made um, coffee pots and a lot of other uh, different small appliances, um, as well as cookware. Uh, they got into the electric skillet business, and this is a West Bend. Now look at this mirror. This has got the vents here, and you turn the handle to expose the number of vents that you want. That's kind of an ingenious idea. Again, it's got the heat uh, control here in the handle. The plug goes in here. It's got your temperature guide, and it's kind of got this uh, copper tone uh, top to it. That was a real popular thing um, in, the, in the 50s and early 60s. Oh, this I always thought was a beautiful electric skillet. This is from wherever and um, aluminum. But look at the beautiful, look at that, look at that shape, Mayor. Can it's you fancy. See it? Isn't it fancy? It's got these teak wooden handles and uh, it's just very elegant. Again, this was the idea for this skillet. Here. Wherever, Hall Light electric cookbook for beautiful cooking and so you know this was again this idea was not just to be functional but why couldn't it also be beautiful at the same time oh here we've got Revereware now Revereware of course made the very famous pots and pans with the copper bottom we have some of those don't yeah. we Mirror. But they also did some electric appliances, and you can see what they did is they put a little copper ring here on the top of the handle because the copper and you know the copper and chrome was sort of their trademark. And so here's a Revereware electric skillet it round. Um, that's actually a nice skillet. And then um, this. Oh, this one's heavy. We've got that one, and I think I've got another one here. Yeah, that's a, another small. Here's a larger one. So these are from a company called Salad Master. These are oil-filled electric skillets. They actually have an oil in the base. They're heavy, um, and that heats up. And some people would tell you they're stainless steel, by the way. Some people would tell you that ensures a more even heat and a better regulated heat. I don't know. I'll, but I will say they're excellent skillets and they're heavy. And I've got a few of those. And then, oh yeah, here. Last but not least is the Cory automatic electric party chef fine for family use and perfect for parties how's that again here's the box that came in although i don't know that it's unused i think it has been used but they kept everything but what i always thought was fun about this particular um electric skillet is What does that look like to you? A flying saucer? <laughs> a flying saucer, exactly. And you know, this would have been made really at the height of the space age, okay? When we were just obsessed with, 
with missiles and rockets and flying saucers and going into outer space uh, during that period. And this would have been it. And this, they really did kind of make this look like a total flying saucer. Um, but, and here's, here's your 100 recipes uh, for your new automatic party chef. So this was really uh, an appliance, uh, the electric skillets were really appliances designed to basically uh, allow you to cook without turning your stove on uh, the range. And it really served well. You could uh, go camping or um, I know that for years, and I still do this, if I'm frying something like chicken or fish, I don't want to do it in the house because either it makes a big mess um, or maybe it makes a smell. And what can I do? I can grab an electric skillet and go out on the back porch and do my frying out there and not worry about it. And then it's just really, even though I've got certainly plenty of stoves and pots and pans, when I make certain things, the electric skillet is my go-to. We use an electric skillet when, whenever we make sloppy joes, right, Mayor? Right. Perfect. Oh, there's nothing better than to make sloppy joes in an electric skillet. I, whenever I'm browning things um, or pan frying pork chops or city chicken, uh, things like that, um, Swiss steak, electric skillet all the way. It is just perfect. Um, and I, I, I could not, it, that is really an appliance that I would never be without is to have an electric skillet. And I don't have to worry because I got 50 of them. Um, and that's part of the fun. And I might be crazy because I collect things like electric skillets, but, um, here's what I'll tell you about all these appliances. They are all manufactured here in the United States at a time when we still built a lot of really wonderful things in this country. And the fact that I haven't tested all of them, but of, of the ones I've used, which have been many, they all work perfectly. I almost forgot, Mayor, and I certainly didn't mean to leave them out, is the Corning electric skillets. So I know a lot of our friends out there have got Corning ware. Uh, the blue corn flower is probably one of the most popular patterns ever made. Well, here, here's an electric skillet to go with it. So it's basically, you know, it looks almost like a hot plate, but here's your temperature control right here. You've got a Corning top, and that sits right on top of it and cooks there. That's a little later model. Here's an earlier model. Look at this. Let me take the... Oop, there. Still got the thrift store price tag on it. Um, this has got your heat control here on the side. And it has your guide on the side. And again, it's just a flat Corningware base. Heats up. And then here's your skillet. And you put it right on top. And you cook right in there. So even Corningware saw an opportunity to make something for people who like cooking with corning ware and the electric skillet was just something that was so universally liked by us that they felt that they wanted to offer it to people who cooked with corning ware so we love electric skillets and we use them all the time and if you have one use it and if you don't have one they still make, there's still some good electric skillets out there, brand new, in the stores. Um, and you can look for those. Or, you know what, if you want one of the old ones, check out your local um, charity thrift store. Um, or a, uh, a state sale, or a rummage, church rummage sale, or things like that. That's where most of these came from. And get yourself an old vintage one. Um, but they're really not only a versatile appliance, I think they're just, they're indispensable. They're really great. So, 
Mary Ann, thanks for working the camera, sister. You're welcome. I appreciate it. And thanks to all of you for our little tour of the electric skillet department here at Cavalcade Museum in Croswell, Michigan. And we will see you next time right here on Cavalcade of Food. In the meantime, stay well, stay safe, and stay strong. Bye, everybody. Bye.